Welcome to Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. You can find us at lcara.net, on Facebook, on YouTube, and on Instagram. If you're enjoying the videos we're producing here at Elcara, please help our club out by hitting that subscribe button. Also, give us some feedback on our videos. Click the like button, share with anybody who may find it interesting, and be sure and hit the bell icon to make sure you get notified of the next video release. Hmm. Do I want radios in my car? Do I want amateur radios in my car? UHF, VHF, HF radios in my vehicle hmm I think I do but I would like to maybe do a little bit of a neater job than I have occasionally seen and even occasionally done myself with certain things in my vehicle hello folks this is Chris KY4CKP and uh, this video is just going to roughly go over the installation process that I've gone through and some of the thought process I've gone through over the last few months actually but in particular here the last week or so uh, putting some HF amateur uh, radios UHF VHF uh, radios in my vehicle and some of the thought process I had for uh, why I decided I, I wanted to do this and uh, some about how I'm going to uh, use them so <clears throat> hang with me and we will uh, go over the process, try not to have it take too long, and demonstrate the effectiveness of it towards the end. So stick around, and we'll uh, get things started here in the next segment. Alright, so starting a few months ago, folks, I decided to put uh, radios in my car, actually uh, maybe a year ago, uh, with a UHF, VHF radio. You can see the little guy sitting there in the center of the console. But a few months ago, I decided to add uh, HF radio to my vehicle. I wanted to test it out. I wanted to see if I really wanted it there, if I thought I would use it. I do travel regionally for work and sometimes I spend six, eight, ten hours in the car. And so I thought, well, yeah, that might be interesting. I had an Alinko DX S8RT with a removable head and uh, had, had an antenna that I could uh, to work onto the back of the vehicle. And so I put that in place and have used it a little bit over the last few months and uh, it actually worked quite well had some nice DX's with it and some regional US contacts and things uh, but all the components were kind of big maybe a little bit clunky the uh, the uh, Linko is not a bad radio uh, it's got that really big head uh, but that's the problem it has a really big head uh, big screen nice really big head maybe not as nice and I decided I wanted to do something a little bit uh, different so that's what's coming up next so once I decided I uh, wanted to move forward with a uh, having HF radio in my car full time, I did decide to upgrade the radio. I uh, decided to get another FT891, Yesu FT891. They're very nice little radios and not really that expensive, about $550. So I got another one of those, uh, which is still a good size screen, uh, but as you can see, overall a much smaller head, removable head. And I got the separation kit uh, for that one. Uh, so this is what I'm going to use. I also decided to uh, pair it up with the Yesu ATOS 120 Alpha, ATAS, Automatic uh, Antenna Tuning System. And it works very nice from the radio. This uh, radio can work with the ATOS antennas. And uh, it makes it a lot more convenient and nicer to work with. And everything is smaller. The antenna is smaller. The radio head is smaller. Still 100 watts, um, and you can see a picture of the antenna on the back of the car there. So we're going to talk about a little bit on the installation, a little bit about what I did. It's not the greatest job in the world, but it's reasonably neat, and uh, I think it's uh, working out pretty well for me so far. Made some cool contacts already. All right, so as we can see in this uh, conglomerate of pictures here, cable management is obviously always going to be an issue, uh, especially with uh, an installation like this because of the remote head, the remote kit. You've got several wires that are going to be going, uh, in my case, from the back of the vehicle towards the front or from underneath your seat to the to the console. And so I wanted to do a pretty good job on this. So I bought some uh, some equipment, bought some zip ties, bought some uh, some split loom conduit and things like that to try to make the install a little bit nicer. And as we'll see, it turned out pretty well, I think. So again, folks, here's just a, a short video clip I took 
just kind of showing the uh, the partial process you can see wiring coming from the back coming up into the dash it's uh, kind of all over the place but I did take the time you can kind of see the green tape in there I did uh, make my own little fish so that I can uh, could work the wires up in there and end up with uh, generally a pretty decent job on that stuff so part of the uh, project was to do bonding and uh, grounding of the components uh, the uh, the hood, the hatch, I'm probably going to do the doors. I'm doing the uh, the horizontal surfaces first and the hatch because that's where the antenna is mounted. So you can see some of the uh, straps I've put in place there. The radio is grounded to the frame. Um, also, um, I created a little copper lug that I could put on the antenna mount itself out of a copper fixture. I just got it uh, Lowe's, uh, beat it into shape and put it on there and drilled it out. Uh, and I'll be covering that up with some rubber tape and some liquid tape and things to help make it more waterproof. So uh, these kinds of steps are necessary and they help reduce your noise footprint. I've got a little more work to do, but it's working well so far. Folks, I just wanted to touch on something briefly. One of the issues people have had with the ATOS and these types of antennas over the years is they end up without having proper bonding and grounding. And if you don't get really good bonding and grounding, the radio is not going to be able to work the antenna correctly. So, so far mine's working pretty well. I think I've done a reasonably good job, but you really want to pay some attention to that and do a pretty good job so you can get functionality out of the antenna the way you would expect. So here's a short clip showing the tuning process for the ATOS 120 uh, and a Yaesu radio. You hit the tune button, it uh, starts to automatically adjust the screwdriver portion of the antenna, and you should end up with something less than 1.5 to 1 SWR. Uh, sometimes I'm completely flat on the band, it just kind of depends of course, but it's been working quite well so far. Okay, we've got the radio tuned up. So I've got a couple of relatively short clips of some contacts I made with the setup so far. One of them, uh, I was very fortunate, happened to catch another mobile unit in Mexico, and he and I had a, a contact. It's not a great uh, connectivity, but we were able to hear and understand each other and pass our signal reports. So that was kind of cool. In fact, that might be my first contact to Mexico. I, I don't normally hear from them too often, it seems like. And then I had another contact from a gentleman just uh, up near Illinois, and uh, he was uh, very strong. So a couple of quick contacts here, and then we'll uh, wrap things up. Mobile, Kilo Yankee 4, Charlie Kilo Papa, Mobile. Kilo Yankee 4, uh, Bravo Papa, go ahead. Kilo Yankee 4, Charlie Kilo Papa, Charlie Kilo Papa, Mobile Station. Kilo Yankee 4, Slow Kilo Papa, is that correct? It's Charlie, Charlie Kilo Papa, Charlie Kilo Papa. Roger, Roger, you're about 5353 five, three, here in Central Kentucky, Central Kentucky. Roger, Roger, Alberto. You were 5-3 Central Kentucky, 5-3 Central Kentucky, 73. Kilo, Kilo. 79KK calling 40 and listening. Kilo Yankee 4, Charlie Kilo, Papa Mobile. Kilowatt Yankee 4, Charlie Kilowatt Papa Mobile. W9KK, uh, thanks for the call and uh, good uh, good afternoon. My name is Cliff, Charlie London, Italy, Fox Fox. Cliff is the name. I'm located near Chicago, about 60 miles, about one hour south of the Chicago. A KY4, CKP Mobile, W9KK. Yeah, Cliff, good to find your call here. I'm actually just doing some quick testing on uh, my mobile unit. It's a Yaesu FT891 paired up with an ATOS 120 Alpha antenna and you're coming in about 10 over 9 so I was just doing some quick testing heard you call in CQ thought I would come back to you uh, this is Chris Charlie Hotel Radio India Sierra yeah Chris real good real good uh, Chris well you're doing a good job here uh, doing a 
good job here, no doubt about it. And Mobile. Good, very nice, very nice indeed. Uh, you're, uh, you're five and seven to eight, five, seven, five, eight, uh, Chris. All right, folks, so we're going to wrap it up for this uh, this particular video. HF Mobile may not be for everybody. Uh, it certainly doesn't have to be. Neither does UHF or VHF, for that matter. But it can be a lot of fun if you spend any time in your vehicle. If you go camping, which I also do, uh, hiking and things like that, if you're uh, out and in your vehicle, it can be a lot of fun. Take some time, any kind of an install like this, take some time, do a halfway neat job of it, pay attention to things like bonding and grounding, and you should be able to have a good experience with it, have a lot of fun. But, of course, being mobile, as opposed to maybe just portable, uh, you know, be safe as well. Always try to be safe with whatever we're doing in the vehicle, but it can be a lot of fun. So this is Chris, KY4CKP, for Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association, 73.